Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to discuss bacterial cell structure. Now bacteria as you know is a very important member of the kingdom monera. Alright, so if you look at a brief overview, what are the different components of bacterial cell? You will find that there are mainly seven different components. Number one, it is the cell envelope. Number two is the cytoplasm. Number three is the nucleoid. Number 4 are the plasmids. Alright. Number 5 are the inclusion bodies. Number uh, 6 is the flagella. And number 7 belongs to pili and fimbri. So in total there are more or less 7 different components that can be seen in a typical bacterial cell. Now cell envelope can be further divided into 3 components which are glycocalyx, cell wall and the plasma membrane. Cytoplasm in turn can also be divided into three components, mesosomes, ribosomes and chromatophores. And inclusion bodies can be divided into three components, which are gas vacuoles, in inorganic inclusions and food reserve. Now in the subsequent lectures, we will see about each component in detail. So the first thing that we have is the cell envelope. So cell envelope is basically the outer covering present in a bacterial cell. It consists of three parts. Number one is the glycocalyx which is also called as a mucilage sheet. Alright. So it is the outermost mucilaginous layer consisting of non-cellulosic polysaccharides with or without proteins. So the many a times questions have been asked on glycocalyx. So it is basically the outermost mucilaginous sheet. In the figure you will see the, this is this is the glycocalyx. This is the outermost mucilaginous sheet which is present in bacterial cell. This portion is called as the glycocalyx. Now, if it is loose, then glycocalyx is called as the slime layer. If it is tough, then it is called as a capsule. So basically, slime layer and capsule are two synonyms of glycocalyx. If it is uh, a loose layer, then we call it as a slime layer. If it is a tough layer, then glycocalyx is called as a capsule. So in the figure you will see this is a capsule which is the outermost mucilaginous tough covering of a bacterial cell. Now what are the functions of glycolysis? This is very important. The functions of glycolysis are prevention from desic desiccation. So desiccation means the drying out of the bacterial cells. So because of this mucilaginous covering, the water cannot easily evaporate from the bacterial cell protection from phagocytes so it acts as an extra protective layer okay which helps to prevent uh, attack from phagocytes protection from toxic chemicals and drugs so because of this mucilaginous layer it also acts as a protective layer to prevent toxic chemicals and drugs from acting on the bacterial cell and thereby resulting in death all right, protection from viruses. So you know some there are some viruses like bacteriophages which infect via bacteria. So because of this mucilation is led, these viruses cannot easily penetrate and get hold of the bacterial cell. Then there is there are also other functions like attachment, immunogenicity, and virulence. Attachment means because, because of this mucilation is led, they can easily attach to host surfaces. Immunogenicity, so this provides immunogenicity property and also virulence property is also sometimes because of this mucilaginous layer. Next layer that we have is called as a cell wall. Now cell wall, basically the main function of cell wall is to provide shape and structural support to the cell. So this is the cell wall, as you can see in this figure, this is the cell wall just inner to the glycocalyx layer. This is the cell wall. So it provides shape and structural support to the cell. Now you will notice that cell wall is basically a layer between the glycocalyx and the plasma membrane. So this portion was the glycocalyx. This is the portion of the cell wall and this is the portion of the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. So cell wall basically lies between glycocalyx and the plasma membrane. All right. So the next thing is cell wall is consisting of peptidoglycan. Now cell wall consists, uh, consists of special type of component which is called as peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan basically forms a structural component of the cell wall and peptidoglycan in turn is composed of two, uh, type, uh, two subunits 
which are called as two components NAG and NAM. So NAG means N-acetyl glucosamine and NAM means N-acetyl muramic acid. These two are cross-linked to form peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is what constitutes the cell wall of a typical bacterial cell. Next layer that we have in the innermost layer is the plasma membrane which is composed of phospholipids and proteins. Alright, so if you can see in this figure, this is the innermost layer which is the plasma membrane. Alright, so these are the different components of the cell envelope. Next, we will look at the, uh, the uh, cytoplasm. So, cytoplasm is basically a crystal or colloidal complex that forms the protoplasm excluding the nuclear. Nuclear means the genetic material present in bacterial cells. So, everything just inert to the plasma membrane excluding the genetic material is the cytoplasm. In the previous figure, if you notice, this is the portion of the cytoplasm. Alright, this is the portion which is called as a cytoplasm. So, this is the genetic material of the nuclear. So, everything in this area inert to the plasma membrane except the nuclear is called as a cytoplasm. Alright. So, cytoplasm consists of mainly uh, three components. We have number one, mesosomes. So, what are mesosomes? They are actually circular or viliform specializations of the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. So, in the right hand side, as you can see, if this is the cell membrane or plasma membrane, sometimes they are protruded into the uh, cytoplasm and they form this circular or viliform like projections within the cytoplasm. So, these are special components which are called as mesosomes. Mesosomes are of two types. We have number one septal mesosomes. The function of septum, septal mesosomes is, the, is to connect nucleoid with the plasma membrane. So, septal mesosomes do what? They connect nucleoid to the plasma membrane. So, they basically act as a bridge. And another function is there, it helps in nuclear formation and septum formation. So, nuclear replication and septum formation are necessary when the bacterial cell divides. Alright, so these two are the properties of septal mesosomes. Apart from septal mesosomes, we have another type of mesosome which is called as the lateral mesosome. So, lateral mesosome, unlike septal mesosome, are not connected to the nuclear, but instead they contain respiratory enzymes. Why? Because they can help in bacterial rep, uh, respiration just like mitochondria. Alright, so they contain respiratory enzymes to help in bacterial respiration. Next component that we have in the cytoplasm which are called as the ribosomes. Now ribosomes are small membraneless ribonuclear proteins. This is very important. Questions have been asked which um, cell entities are without any membrane. So, answer will be ribosomes. So, ribosomes do not contain any membrane. So, they are small membrane-less ribonucleoproteins means a composition of ribonucleic acid plus protein. Alright. So, as you can see in the right hand figure, this is what the figure of ribosomes look like. This large component of the ribosome is called as a large subunit and this smaller component of the ribosome is called as a small subunit. So, ribosome more or less has two subunits, large subunit and a small subunit. So, they are again can be divided into two types. Fixed type of ribosomes and free type of ribosomes. Fixed ribosomes are attached to the plasma membrane while free ribosomes are not attached to any plasma membrane and they occur freely within the cytoplasm. So, the function of ribosomes is protein translation. So, what happens from mRNA? Suppose this is the mRNA. Ribosomes attaches to this mRNA and they bring about the translation of mRNA into proteins. Alright, we will see later on that Translation is actually the um, uh, process of forming proteins from mRNA. So, the, this is mediated by ribosomes. Alright. So, next thing that we have are the chromatophores. So, these basically are those compounds within a bacterial cell that uh, contain certain pigments. Alright. So, they occur mostly in purple 
sulfur bacteria and green sulfur bacteria. So the third component that we have in a bacterial cell are called as the nuclear. Nuclear, this is the genetic material present in a bacterial cell. So in a bacterial cell, the nuclear is a single copy of circular strand of DNA that is present. It is oval in shape and it is considered as naked. This is very important. Why nuclear is considered as naked? Because of non-association of histone proteins and absence of any nuclear envelope. So later on we will see in case of animal cells, uh, there is association of the genetic material or the DNA with histone proteins and also the DNA is within a nuclear envelope. Alright, so these things are not present in case of bacterial genetic material or nuclear. That is why because of non-association of histone proteins and absence of nuclear envelope, bacterial genetic material or nuclear is called as naked. So here as you can see, this is the nuclear. This is what it looks like. More or less the shape is like a oval, oval in shape and you will not see any membrane present just on the boundary of this uh, nuclear. So it is considered as naked. Another genetic material that we have in bacteria which are called as plasmids. Now there, this is, there, is, uh, there is one difference between nuclear and plasmids. Alright, unlike the nuclear which is the genetic material of bacterial cell and when a bacterial cell divides, nuclear, nuclear also undergoes replication. Plasmids are self-replicating extra chromosomal double-stranded DNA molecules, naked DNA molecules. So bacteria basically has two DNA. One is which is the genetic material of the nuclear. Another DNA is also present which is which are self-replicating means they can self-replicate themselves independent of the control of the bacterial genetic material. Alright. So they are independent from the nuclear that is a uh, bacteria can have one nuclear and many plasmids. All right, so they can undergo self-replication without bothering about the replication of the bacterial cell or the replication of the nuclear. Like when a bacterial cell divides, it gives rise to two cells. So one nuclear also undergoes division to form two nucleus. But uh, plasmids are not the under the control of nuclear or bacterial cell. They can undergo their own replication and from one plasmid, two plasmids, two plasmids, four plasmids. So a bacterial cell can have one nuclear and many copies of the plasmids. All right. So many plasmids can be present within the bacterial cell. So they are self-replicating and independent of the control of bacterial chromosomal DNA.